Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this really pretty bow and this is going to be called the charm bow and as you can see I've made it in 1.5 inch ribbon super cute mini ones in 1 inch ribbon there we go a massive 3 inch ribbon version and a 2 inch ribbon version and on this one as you can see I've done this one upside down so on the other versions it's up like this so like i said it's quite a versatile bow because as you can see you can layer your ribbon you can do it with silver edge you can do it with just one layer of ribbon and you get all completely different looks like i said you can wear it this way or you can wear it that way so like i said it gives you two options straight away without you even trying and again if you did um a chair bow or a half pinwheel underneath like i said again depending on whether or not you have it this way up or this way up again it's two completely different looks so like i said you can really really play around with this style and have a lot of fun with it the other thing you'll notice because of how warm it is in the uk and we don't cope very well with with it getting warm in the uk because we don't experience it very often uh, but it's up to something like 31 degrees which is like i said probably about the hottest it ever gets over here and like i said we don't handle it very well mild temperatures all the way in the UK that's what it's about I've actually had to get my wood burner out instead of my trusty lighters because I've had my fans on and all that happens when I have these on is the fan knocks the flames out and I can't get anything sealed properly so I have actually got my wood burning tool this is my wood burning one I got this for £10 from Hobbycraft in the UK and I use mine on a glass um glass board and again i didn't buy this from the crafting area i actually brought this from the range in the uk in their kitchenware section and it cost me about eight pound and it's just a tempered glass wooden chopping board which is a bit cheaper than the craft ones because craft ones can range anywhere between sort of 14 pound to 30 pound depending on how big and this one is a massive one it is just get this it's 20 inches by 15 inches so like i said it is a big board it's just slightly out of the way so i don't have it in, in my area the whole while and the other thing that i've got is this metal ruler which i have actually pinched off my housemates crafting supply section rather than my own and i've already heat sealed all of my bits ribbon together so i thought i've got a couple of scraps here and i will say this i'm not normally very good with these wood burners like i said i've got mine in a old disney mug that i've got really deep disney mug because if i keep it on the stand i tend to knock it all over the place and like do myself serious damage and the other thing and then this is a trick that i've learned from bethany robinson um and she's got a lovely um ribbon help group which is called let's talk about ribbon and bows she did a lovely live teaching me some tricks on how to use this which without i honestly say i, I wouldn't have had it out today and in my cup is one of these it's a woolen like scouring pad and it's in the base of this cup here and when you put your tip in any of the bits of ribbon that get on here you can wipe it on that and it stops it from building up and getting like melted and little bits like can you see where i've got that little bit of ribbon there that's come off it it doesn't burn doesn't smell and like i said it still seals just as well so like i said i got um 10 pack of these for eight pound and I do believe they'll last quite a while before you actually have to remove them. The only thing I will say is this cup's now quite warm because obviously the scouring bit is sort of just making the heat sort of move around. So be careful when you're touching it. I always use my handle to move it around if I need to. But I keep that in there. And like I said, I've already done all of this, but I thought I'd just show you. What I do is obviously I've got my white layer and my pattern layer. And I'll line them up together and then like I said I've got a metal ruler because the plastic ones and things like that it just melt these are really good make sure that's lined up nice and evenly and then you can just do that and you get a perfectly joined piece of ribbon and like I said the other bit I'd measure to the length that I wanted and then like I said 
seal that end as well and that's what I've done for all my bits and pieces that I've already got made so let's just move these a little out of the way I'm just going to pause a second while I'm moving board so you can't see it wait me a minute there we go unpaused again and as you can see I've got this lovely mermaid scale print and as I just showed you there I've heat sealed them together using this method that I just showed you with my wood burner I rarely use wood burner and the other thing that I actually did is because I've been practicing a little bit today like I said thanks to Bethany's tips I've actually cut my tails on this chair bow that's going to be the base bow nicely with it as well but again it's not something I normally attempt like I said it's purely the heat in the UK and the fact that I couldn't get my lighter to play how I wanted it to today you have to excuse me because like I said it's so warm I've had to get a bit more fluid into me than I normally would now this one's got the mermaid print and the other trick for this one is what you want to do is when we start we want to be making sure that this mermaid print is facing down towards you so like I said you print so even if you had fairies say you had with this one you would want the mermaids facing towards you not upside down like that just so you know and this one is one that we're doing one in one way and one in the other way so one part's left one part's right so I'll always show you both ways because I find when for my brain especially when I'm doing a make that's half left half right if I make them individually that's where I sort of make mistakes and get myself muddled so this is how I do it so I don't get confused okay let me just move some of this out of the way so I'm not bothering myself okay so as you can see we've folded that one in half to the right this one in half to the left like I said I literally had to do the left right thing with my fingers that's how bad I am at this at some times okay and what we want to do is we take this corner and we bring it up over here and what you want to do is you keep moving it this side here because this is two inch ribbon and it is four times sorry four times 38 centimeters and the chair bow for the base which is done on a six inch template is 55 centimeters but don't worry if i've missed anything it will all be in the description below along with any sort of technique changes um on the different sizes because there is a little bit of change on some of them so like i said you take this corner you want to move this over to here and what we do to check that we've got the right size is as i said two inch ribbon is five centimeters wide and what you want to do is make sure this bit this edge here is five centimeters up and that this corner here is against this line there and then you can re-clip that down this way now this side we're going to go the opposite way we're going to take this corner and go up this way so it faces opposite to this And again, like I said, you make sure this bit is five centimetres. Okay. If it was 1.5 inch ribbon, you'd be doing, that's four centimetres wide, so you'd be doing four centimetres here and so on. And like I said, you just adjust it down depending on your measurements. But the other thing to do, so if you're ever uncertain... You can go like this and make sure, like I said, your depths and everything are the same. So this is what you should have at this point, like I said, a left side and a right side. Okay. Now the next thing to do is we want to bring this underneath this edge. Like so, straight down. So from here, curve down. And you bring it under this bit and again you want your ruler because this bit here whatever the rib, 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 ribbon width is that's how many centimeters gap you want so you want two centimeters here and again clip 
and then this side obviously that side we've gone over here this one we want this against this side like so so this corner is against that fold there and this is what your front will look like and as you can see when we put this upright you'll see the print going the right way round so like I said this is what you get front and this is the back okay so that's one side and that's going to be this side and we're going to do exactly the same on this one so this one up to here I want to make sure a bit further two centimeters recreate clip this one this corner lined up to here like so and again the patterns the right way up make sure your edges are all straight and again these are your fronts like so this is what your back looks like okay and like i said it's important that like i said that's two centimeters on both sides and as you'll see they're the same height both sides okay and then i've got my double side extra strength double threaded gutterman thread and i have a sharp darning needle which is seven centimeters rather than a standard needle okay and we start from above this side so in and then what we do is go over there and we're going to do six stitches and i won't count i'll show you once i've done And the sixth stitch should be coming back up through these layers through that corner on this side so through there through both sides of that triangle point here and on the other side we're going to come up through the triangle so we're going to go in from above through those two triangle layers through there and again you want six stitches this side and i'll show you once i've placed them all like I said, make sure that these edges are all aligned. And like I said, your last stitch should be coming back up through that there. And what you'll get, you should get three creases on both sides. So. Let me draw as I do. In, one, two, out. In, one, two, out. And on the back, you'll have one, two, three. One, two, three. And this one comes just over the join. Okay, that first one on both sides. So one that's over that line, two, three, and they're the back. And it's in, one, two, out, in, one, two, out on the other side. And this will help you get nice, even creases. And if you can get your stitches in the same places on both sides, what you can do is, like I said, line up your creases to do this cinch stitch instead of making them in two pieces which you can also do and go through like this one side so like I said reline them up pull that nice and tight and then like I said line these three back up And then what that does is, as you can see it helps to line up your creases if you do the cinch method instead of like I said making in two parts and gluing them together 
how pretty does that shape look and then I just stitch off in the back however you personally prefer and again me I come up from behind and do just an anchor stitch over the middle creases there we go and that stops that from pulling it open that one just cut that off and like I said if you really wanted to as you saw with the pink big version you could add your center to this one and you can do it this way up or this way up whichever you personally prefer like I said all you do is like I said wrap your center and you've got a really cute bow either way just by doing this if you wanted to go a little bit fancier as i said i have got 55 centimeters in the two inch ribbon and what i've done is i've already cut my tails at the same almost the same angle using my heat sealer i'll get that a bit more even in a minute uh, but yeah so i've already done mine with my heat sealer and what i do is i've got my six inch templates so let's place that down here and you want to wrap it around like so and you want this crossover to go in the center what i do is i put my clip here so make sure that your ribbon i'll just show you gonna fold this in half like so just so I can see where my center is okay so when I place this I'm going to make sure that that's centered and then I can cross these over like I said make sure that this cross is against there and clip here and then to give it the chair loopy look what I like to do is bring this cross here so that lines up with the original crease okay. we'll just do it there there we go so Cross here, cross here, and we will clip against the template. There we go. When we stitch in, we'll move it up a little bit. Apologies. Sometimes I get ahead of myself. Okay, so we want to put six stitches in on this. So we get three crease creases like our main part of our bow to help balance it. So from above, in, five, and six back up through the, that one, then we can take our clips off. Slide it down our template. And then cinch to get three creases. And this way, if you have two colours, this is where you get your pop of colour on the okay, so I'm just going to stitch it off in the back. Like so, and then what I do instead of glue is I come back up through that middle third crease there like so decide which way up you're going to have your bow whether or not you want it this way up or this way up I personally am partial to it 
I like it so that these bits at the top, so like I said, I'm going to put my needle back through the third crease on this one in the middle, like that. Make sure that they're nice and centered like that. And then wrap around a couple of times, nice and tight, like so. And then, like I said, back stitch that off as you like. I'm just going to move these clips out of the way because I don't like seeing them on my desk. There we go. So, get rid of that. Pop that out of the way. There you go. Get a little pop of your chair though in the back and like I said your tails and like I said you can mix this up you could do half pinwheels you've got lots of different options and like I said every single base bow gives it a slightly different look so you can literally play around and play around until you find something that you personally like and like I said you can even do the bow the opposite way around and have the white at the top and these bits curving in at the bottom so like I said mix it up you can, can be completely creative and make whatever shape you want. Let's just attach my clip there. Got my corresponding line now. I am just going to touch that on the edge just to heat seal that, like I said, rather than get my lighter out. Drop of glue. Right on the centre. Wrap round at least twice, nice and tight. One. Open again. Round. Cut that. And again, I'm just going to get my... Just ever so gently to heat seal that. that back up and there we go. resin like I said you could do a nice mermaid um, tail or something like that give it like I said an under the theme sea theme or a mermaid something I'm gonna do a nice scrunchlet middle and what I do is make the S shape this end and again I'll just show you with my tool like I said, I can't think better than me enough because like I said, I haven't been brave enough to actually use this myself in, I've had it about four years and I've used it about three times. So that's what I do, run it over a little bit and do that. That's a little bit long, so I'm just going to cut that touch. And then what you do is you do the S shape again, but you do it the opposite direction. So you get that pinch down that way and that pinch down that way. And again, be careful of your fingers, ever so gently, pinch, ever so gently. You barely want to put any pressure on that whatsoever. And that's what you get. You get this. And then flat side down, put a drop of glue here. Just there. And like I said, always remember, if I ever miss something, like measurements or anything like that, or I talk too fast, technique changes for different widths, all of that is always in my description boxes. That's a little bit long, so I'm just going to cut that down a little bit. Again, pop this out. Give it a little pinch, bring that round, glue down on the flat side. There we go. And as you can see, we have got a super, super cute charm bow that is so versatile. 
like I said, you can do it on one layer, so you can do it with two pieces of ribbon, um, and like I said, not have the colour printed layer in. You can do it with um, a solid colour, you can do it with the edges, you can do your patterns. Like I said, it's got all the different sizes, all the way up to the massive three inch version. Um, you can mess around with your bow shapes on your bases, you can use it this way up. You can do it this way up like i said play around make it completely your own if you need any more help or advice on any of the stuff in the video at all i've got my facebook page and my facebook group linked below and i'll put them down i'll also put a shout out to bethany's group as well because like i said they do some lovely little mini lives that are really useful for people like i said whether or not you've been making bows for two years two minutes or whether or not you've been making them for 10 years there's always something you can be learning all the time um, so like I said, I'll put all the links below in the description box along with the measurements for all the different ribbon rocks whips. So from right from three inch down to one inch ribbon. And I'll also put all the technique changes because as I said before, depending on the ribbon, depends on where you need to fold it down. And the same on the templates and things like that. It's a slightly different technique. The only thing that stays the same, the same is you need six stitches to get your three creases and all pieces. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. And thank you for watching. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.